Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're making a felt seat cover using some thicker felt and some of this thinner felt from the dollar store. What I'm doing here is I'm tracing around my circle pattern. It's um, 14 inches in diameter, so I just drew a paper pattern and I took a chalk pencil and I just outlined right the way around. I'll be cutting that out. I'm using this heart stencil from Funky Junk's Old Sign Stencils to develop my pattern here. And I traced around the outside. And then I developed this grid pattern. I'm going for a Mondrian look here. And I also marked each pattern piece with the color it's going to be. So what I'm gonna do next is cut out my circle pattern and then cut my grid out of black and then we'll go from there. I've got my roll of felt here and I'm using these Fisker shears to cut out my circular pattern. Now these are great for anyone that wants to avoid hand fatigue. It doesn't have um, you know, this handle to put your upper thumb in and I find that that becomes especially sore when I use regular scissors. So I'm gonna use these and they're fantastic. In order to cut my shapes, I'm using these little scissors they're actually sewing scissors, but they're really great for getting into the fine details. At the end of the day, I want to use both the interior of this pattern and this grid. So I have to cut it in such a way that I don't ruin either of these. And this gets right into the corner. So here I have my shape and I've got the cutout of my grid here. I'm going to continue cutting out the rest of these and then we're going to cut out our felt shapes. I've got a stencil cutter heating up to see whether it will cut through two layers of this felt. Now I also have a ruler with a metal edge to guide these straight lines. Now I have a piece of glass underneath. Now when you lift it, you're left with the blue melted onto the black here. So that's what we're gonna try to do, is melt the blue onto the black. Same with all these other colors. So first I'm gonna take a mechanical pencil here and it's a special fabric pencil. It's got a chalk in it. And we're just gonna trace all my lines out. And what I'm left with is the impression of where I want my colors. Okay, I think we'll start with yellow. Now on the yellow one here, I'm just gonna put the pattern. Now the white is not gonna show up, so I'm gonna get my blue chalk. So here's the blue chalk. I'll just define the edges here. Take my ruler and join those lines. Now it might be better to leave a little bit more of an edge around here, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna place my yellow over my pattern on the black. We're gonna overlap. We'll just crease this back. Just gonna make sure I've got my lines matched up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, when I come in with the stencil cutter, I just wanna be on the inside of that line. So I'm gonna come along and go right through. Let's try another one. Thank you. 
and again. Now be sure that you return it to the stand so that it's not going to melt anything. And what you should be able to do is just tear away leaving the block. Now if you find there's any little stubborn bits, just come along and just gently ease that away. And there you go. You've got your yellow in place. Now we're ready for the next color. We're gonna do exactly the same thing, tracing out our pattern, putting it over the black, and then just melting through the lines so that we've got it in place. So again, we're tracing out the pattern with our chalk pencil. All the way around. We've got our pattern traced out. We're on a piece of glass here. We're gonna bring our pattern back. We're going to overlap. And what you can do is, um, let me just show you how you can, can get it a lot more precise. So if you come through the corner here, come through with your pin, and then you're just going to line it up and drop it down. Come through this other corner with your pin. And then you just want to line up the corner. But you just want to come through with your pin and ensure that you're on the line directly underneath. And again, you want to make sure you're lined up with your previous piece too. When you're satisfied that your lines coincide, making sure that you've got your glass underneath. Just going to bring the ruler over here. And you're going to ensure that you can see your white chalk line. You're coming just inside. Gonna take the burner and just run along the edge here. And stop when you get to the corner. When you run along the metal edge of the ruler, you get a nice sharp line. And if you find you have to go over it, just to loosen a little, you can come back and do that. Just ensure that you're going over the same line and that you're keeping the edge against the metal. If it's gone through, you should be able to pull it away. If you haven't gone deep enough, just come at it again until you've gone all the way through. Now before you lift, just ensure that you can break that away. Good. 
And again, just be really gentle with it. Anywhere it's a little stubborn, you can either use the iron again, or if it's just a few threads, you can come in with scissors and just release that. Sometimes it's really hardly anything. It's just a thread or two. And just pull it away. And if there's the odd thread, these scissors are great. There you go, that's our blue piece. We've got our blue and yellow done, so we're gonna set it to the side. We've got another piece of blue here. So let's go ahead and trace this. Make sure that your lines are dark enough that you can see it. If you find them a little faint, just take a ruler and just darken it up. So you want it nice and dark. Now we're gonna bring our piece back with the glass underneath. And do make sure the glass is underneath so that you don't accidentally burn through. So again, we're gonna lay it over and just ensure that you've got the proper overlap here by using the pin to position the edge. Okay, that's good to go. So again, I'm bringing back my straight edge and I'm starting with the straight edges here. Now, you do want to ensure that you have the metal edge the right way out. Some of these only have a metal edge on one side. So just ensure that you've got the metal edge towards you. You don't want to be burning your wood. And there you've got a nice clean line. That's looking pretty good. If we have to go over it, we can. Turn your work, line up your next straight edge. And again, we're pushing against the ruler. And running along. looking pretty good. Now this curve is going to have to be freehand. So just come in. Try to be steady. and then lift away. And again, if there's any stray threads, you can simply cut those. And if there's anything that's really stubborn, you can come back with your straight edge and just come along. So we're moving on to another piece of white now. And again, use a pin to poke through the corner to see if you've located the corner right underneath. And that should help you position. Again, we're on top of the glass. We've got the metal edge of our ruler facing outwards. And we are just cutting shy of the line. I'm going to lean up the stencil cutter against the edge of the ruler. I'm going to come down and drag it right against the ruler. Now 
Now if there's anywhere that you missed, just come back and gently go over it again before you lift it. To see if you are successful, just give a tug and if it comes away easily, you're all the way through. And if not, just come back again. Make sure you don't reposition anything until you've ensured that you've cut all the way through. Now you're only cutting through the white fabric, not the black. So again, you just want to gently tug and make sure that it's going to easily come away. Got a little bit of stubbornness down here. That seems to be good. So now I can reposition, turning my work. Actually, I'm gonna reposition the other way. Ideally, you want the metal edge of the ruler on the inside of your line, and that will give you a clean line. You probably can't see this on camera, but the outside of the line is fairly bumpy here, but because I'm coming along the metal edge of the ruler, it's nice and straight and clean. So again, you want to line up just inside your line, come against the ruler before you drop down, and just drag along slowly and steady. And then lift. And test it out. I'm good there. And again, you shouldn't move the ruler. You should keep it perfectly where it was before you start lifting. There, now you can see it comes away perfect. And if there's anything that's caught, like just one thread or so, you can come in with an X-Acto knife and just gently coax those free. You're not aiming to cut through um, the fabric underneath, you're just coaxing away those fibers. Alternately, you can take your little scissors and give a snip. Now once again we're going to turn our work and this is the tricky part. It's always tricky to do these curves so we just have to freehand it and ideally you want to do it all in one go. So I'm going to position myself so I'm comfortable. Make sure your cord isn't pulling. It's not really practical to use the ruler on these curves, but let's just give this a try. Do a small section at a time. Probably won't give us an ideal curve. a little bit choppy. But if you're not confident to do the line in one go, then you can just move the ruler as you come along, insert the tip where you left off, and just keep curving as you come along. It's actually looking not too bad. So again, if there's any parts that didn't cut through, you can just gently come along and 
just go over that again. And I'm not pressing down hard at all. I'm being very gentle. You're just coming through the top of the white fabric. And again, any stubborn parts, and you can come along with the X-Acto knife just to separate some of those fibers. It's better to have a lighter touch rather than be too heavy handed and come right through the black. That's not what you're trying to do here. Sometimes all you're doing is remelting the fibers together, so it's better just to come in with the X-Acto. Just lift those away. And again, just snip some of those stubborn fibers where they're caught. It just takes a few to not want it to lift away, but you'll get there, just be patient. The fibers are so felted, they really are strong. It just takes one or two to want to hold it in place. Okay. We're going to move on to our last white piece and what you might want to do is just cut around the piece, give it a little bit of room around the edges here and that will help you judge where it is in proximity to the next piece. Okay, so let's just turn it around, make sure I'm happy with the placement on the other side. And I'm happy with that. So turn the work in such a way that you can position your ruler so that it's on the inside of your piece. So we're going to start right there. Again, I'm bringing the stencil burner up against the edge and then I'm lowering it and dragging along that straight edge. I'm just coming slowly. Now I'm going to give a tug and just see where it's still not separated. I'll just go over that lightly again. All you're doing is melting the fibers apart. As you can see, that's a really nice release. So the more you do this, the more you get attuned to how much time and pressure you need. Again, a really light touch, but you might have to go over it twice to get this nice clean release. So I'm going to rotate my work. And again, I'm on the inside of that line. And I'm lined up, you can see the yellow here. I'm on that edge too. You wanna have nice straight lines coming across. So I'm going in to the side here and lining up against the edge first. And then I'm lowering it and I'm dragging. And coming really slowly. And you can kind of just feel when it's right. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to come really lightly once again just to separate some of these fibers.
And that's great, there's just one spot there. I'm just gonna touch quickly. And as you can see, that pulls right away. So I'm gonna turn right around, I'm doing all my straight lines. Lining up the ruler, making sure I'm on the edge of the yellow, which is the next color. Coming into the side, lining up against the edge before I lower. So I've done three edges here. As you can see, they pull away pretty easily. And what I did was I lined up against the straight edge and I'm ensuring that the ruler, that the middle edge of the ruler, is on the inside of my piece so that when I drag along, I get a nice clean line. And then the outer edge can be as bumpy as it, as it can be. Doesn't matter because we're not using that. So this is the last line I'm doing. And I'm gonna use the ruler to help with the curve. So I'm just going to start and then move as I go. So I'm just turning the ruler along the line. And that helps get a clean line. If you're unhappy with any little part, you can just go over it a touch. For the most part, that's pulling away pretty easily. The edges can be a little stubborn. So if you have to, you can just come back and just come in and make sure that the corner is fully cut. And then lift right away. And again, I'm just gonna make sure this corner is fully cut, just come in. outward hold it down and if you have any stubborn threads because sometimes they do melt together just come along and release those And there, nice clean lines. So it really is coming together. We just have, I think, one more piece to do, the red. And just in case my camera cut out earlier and it didn't get caught on camera, I just want to remind you that we are cutting on a piece of glass here. And we've got a metal edge ruler. We're cutting on the inside of the line. We're going to line up the ruler so we're just inside our cut line. We're going to bring the tip of the stencil cutter right against the edge of the ruler and then drop it down and then start cutting. Cutting towards me. Now, if you pull and nothing lifts, you just wanna go over that once again to make sure that you're cutting through the red. And again, always return the stencil iron to its stand 
before I move on, I'm just going to see how easy that is to pull. And it's still having a bit of trouble, so let's give it one more go. Seems to be good. Okay, so I'm going to move on to my next line. I'm going to rotate my work. Make sure I'm still in the glass here. I'm going to position the ruler on the inside of my piece. You're always rotating in such a way that you're on the inside of your line. That'll give you a nice clean line when you cut. And again, just be aware of where you are. I'm just going to lean against, drop, and bring the knife along the edge. You just slide it right along. And then pull away. It's always good to pull away before you move the ruler because if you have to go back in you haven't shifted anything. Now I spoke too soon because I can see I'm a little bit short of this line here but I'll leave that for the end. Now, the rest is going to be curvy cuts, so I am going to use the ruler just to help me position. I'm just using the ruler to line up some of these segments. And I'm curving the ruler as I go. Okay, so that burned through. Now it does tend to melt together, so I think in this instance, I'll probably take the X-Acto blade and just gently cut through where it's melted. I'm actually gonna switch out my blade for a sharper one to finish this off. Just one more piece to do in here, and there's our Mondrian inspired heart. The last step is going to be to bring back our stencil. So taking my chalk, I'll just redraw right around the stencil. And then we're going to cut our edges away and we'll be able to, once the edges are cut, we'll be able to get it onto our seat cover. And to finish it off, we're gonna punch holes in the side of the seat cover all the way around, and we're gonna do a blanket stitch. Let's set this aside for now. I'm gonna show you how to do the blanket stitch on this little sample. Okay, so let's say this is the seat, and this is gonna be the rim that goes right around our curved uh, piece here. So we've punched holes in the felt using this tool. leaves a hole and we've got matching holes the same distance apart. We're just going to thread this into a blunt darning needle. So we're going to come through the front just from behind and we're going to hide that tail end after. come through and we've got a loop there. We're going to take our needle and come through that loop. And tighten down. 
Now we're going to come from behind into the next set of holes from the back to the front. Again we've got our loop, we're going to come through from right to left. And tighten that up. Again coming back to front through those holes. And we're going to bring the needle from right to left through that loop. And tighten. I'll just finish off the next two here. And there you go, that's a blanket stitch. And when we've got our seat, that will run all the way around to bring the two pieces together. Now that we're done, we're just gonna cut around the edge and we'll be able to applique it onto our gray main fabric. And there we go, all ready to applique onto our seat cover. I'm now at the sewing machine and I'm stitching along all the edges with invisible thread. That's what I'm using right there. And it's clear so you won't be able to see it but I'm just coming right along the edges just to make sure that nothing lifts. And I'm going right through both fabrics so that it gets stitched right onto the seat. I'm using this paper punch to punch half inch increments around the perimeter of my pattern. I'll complete the rest of this off camera, but once I'm done, I'll take my leather punch here and I'll line it up along the edge. And then I'll use that to position where I'm going to be punching my felt. And that way I can go all the way around and punch my holes. After punching out my paper pattern with this notcher, I placed the pattern onto the back of the felt and I just marked with a chalk pencil. Just going around. Now that I've got my marks, I'm taking my punch tool and I'm just placing it right on that mark and punching through. Sometimes it doesn't go all the way through, you just have to sort of pick it out. Got a little wire for that just to clear the hole. And there's the right side with the holes punched. I'm going to continue all the way around and then I'm going to cut out a strip to use as the gusset that we're going to blanket stitch to the outer edge. I calculated the length of this gusset by multiplying um, my diameter of the circle by 3.14. Now I'm going to cut it with a rotary blade. I've got a mat, cutting mat, right underneath here. I'm just cutting right along the straight edge. Now I have to move the fabric along and I'm going to complete my cut. Now my cut is complete and I have a beautiful straight edge. I just missed a little right here where I moved to the ruler, so I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and cut that. Now I'm ready to complete my holes on one of the long edges and stitch it all together.